Okay, hi, it's Jackie Cahill here from the LGFA, and we're on our first call of the year, would you believe? Uh, well, the first call with me, anyway. You've seen plenty of our videos over the last few months, and indeed over, uh, roughly over the last year or so since we uh, entered into a whole new world, um, a virtual world, and we've, on, we've been on plenty of Zoom calls. Three very special guests today. As we get back on track, we had a number of uh, coach-specific uh, videos that we brought to you last year. Uh, William Harmon, uh, National Development Officer with the LGFA with Remit for Coach Education, was on board with them last year, you'll recall. Um, we went through plenty of topics and we're going to kickstart um, three more, I believe, William, over the next number of weeks. So today is our first one and we're very, very happy to be joined uh, by Dr. Brona McGrain, to give you a proper title, Brona, from DCU. Um, and she's going to be chatting about her findings uh, from a physical physical activity and well-being study, which we also saw in the LGFA research pod recently as well. And also very, very happy to be joined by Ashling Nig Rourke. I hope I've pronounced that, Ashling, from Kula, who last year went viral with a GA video uh, and her Keeping Girls Playing project. She's from the Kula Club in Dublin. William, I hope I've uh, summarised all of that okay. How are you? I'm in great form, Jackie. Hope you're all well and um, looking forward to today's show now with uh, Brown and Ash and yourself. Because... As, we are, as we all are. Um, William, so what's coming up over the next uh, few shows, if you want to just tell viewers about what they can expect? Yeah, so last year, as you, as you mentioned, uh, Jackie, we focused on, I suppose, last year's show was focusing on uh, creating a positive coaching environment. And all those clips are available on our LGFA YouTube channel if people want to go back and, and look through those. Absolutely. But our next three shows with the coach education, uh, I suppose, focus will be looking at the demands of our game. So what are the key demands of our game that will help a, a player, I suppose, reach their potential? And those demands are the technical aspects, so the ability for a girl to kick pass, hand pass, um, you know, uh, solo. Then you have the physical demands, which is like looking at uh, the area of moving well, being able to jump, twist, turn. And also we look at that in that one, Jackie, the whole area of, I suppose, injury prevention, uh, in particular around ACLs in female sport. Uh, we would also then look at the area of, of a tactical approach. So looking at, okay, the awareness of runs, how to make those runs, what you, how do you promote that in your sessions? And then today, which we're looking at is the psychosocial element. So looking really at, I suppose, understanding the player, and there's, there's more to the player than, than the footballer. And also, how do we develop that coach-athlete relationship, uh, Jackie? So that's really what we're going to focus on today. So there's going to be three shows in total. Today's looking at that psychosocial aspect. And the other two shows, we'll look at the, um, we'll look at the technical, tactical, and the physical element of things. So that's, that's what we're going to be focusing on anyway, Jackie. Well, good stuff, William. Uh, love your headphones as well, and a lovely speaker as well. You're you're well geared up for the next few shows, anyway. Thank you, Jackie. Thank you. It's uh, important, I suppose, Jackie, because I have the airport beside me, so I think it's important to kind of keep in line with the with the whole area and stuff like that. <laughs> so look, uh, uh, by day, William is a, a very successful coach um, as well, and by night, he's an air traffic controller, folks. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Doctor Brona, good to have you on. Well known, of course, to uh, loud LGFA fans. Um, as a player, an assistant professor, correct me on any of this, Brona, an assistant professor in physical education in the School of Arts, Education and Movement, DCU. Correct. Good. We're on the right track. Your research areas include physical activity, school-based interventions, fundamental movement skills, sport and well-being, deep breath. A lot in that, uh, Dr. Brona McGrain, you can also follow, we can also follow you as we do on Twitter at Dr. B. McGrain, P.E., uh, Brona, what we really want to talk to you about is your insightful findings, and this is a must-watch if you haven't already seen it on the LGFA Research Pod, um, your physical activity and well-being study, which is also available to view online. Uh, Brona, take it away. Um, in terms of the, the key findings and learnings that we can apply um, to the LGFA, um, what are they? Well, I suppose um, we went down with a view of looking at the physical activity of, I suppose, the adolescents, teenagers age group in Ireland. Um, so we surveyed over 5,000 teenagers wow. um, from all across the country, so every single county. Um, of that, there was over 3,200 females. Um, so we got a good um, kind of view of the female teenagers. Um, we saw that Obviously, they're not active enough, so we know we should be like minimum physical activity guidelines are 60 minutes a day for teenagers. Yeah. And of that, um, 
8% were achieving this. Um, especially for girls, it's a lot worse. Um, so for girls, then when we looked at their well-being and anxiety and depression symptoms, two in five of the girls we assessed um, had uh, high levels of anxiety. Over 50% had moderate symptoms of depression, um, which is like, it's very worrying. Um, then when we actually looked at, okay, like we all know that Oh, we're saying it all the time, oh, there's a big dropout in sport, especially for girls and teenagers. When we looked, 1% of six years um, of girls were actually meeting the physical activity guidelines. So like, um, because, and they're trying to study and they're trying to do exams and all that that goes with it. And I think for me, like playing sport, that is when you probably do lose a lot. Like, oh, we exams this year. Um, but the study, I think, showed that actually the physical activity, anyone that was reaching the physical activity guidelines, they had lower symptoms of depression and anxiety and higher well-being. Um, and that's people who are just active, physical activity, walking, jogging, doing housework, whatever you can do. Um, but then team sports in particular, our study found actually had an even greater effect. So like a protective effect against these symptoms of anxiety and depression. So for me, it's like, okay, we know physical activity is good for your mental health, but now we actually know the team sport in particular is even better. Um, so for like ladies get at football, to me, that's a no brainer. Well, we know they're not active enough. We know the high levels of symptoms of anxiety and depression. So we need to keep them in the game. We need to get them into the game, first of all, and then we need to keep them in the game. Um, and how do we do this? And why as well is it team sport? Why, what in team sport, I suppose, is providing this protective effect? And when we looked and we spoke about it among myself and the other researchers on the team, um, we started thinking about, well, it's obviously the social context. So it's not just being active, it's being active with your peers in a social context, that interaction. Um, and I suppose coaches need to allow for that. So if it is chit chat a train and you need to allow for it and um, things like having goals and um, that they feel like they're achieving something even and that's every single girl on your panel it's not just the good ones and um, that they're achieving something a sense of belonging so little things especially in female sport things like team huddles a sense of team identity we all love a bit of jazzy new gear um, but it is a sense of belonging and a sense of identity for the team um, having role models, I know uh, the 2020 campaign was brilliant, but it's fine having role models, but are the coaches that train and highlighting, like there's no point highlighting someone on the male county team that did something well. Why not highlight someone on the female county team and actually create that awareness? Um, and coaches need to, I think, upskill themselves as well in that too. Like I've been at training where I've been told about um, Messi or Ronaldo, like we have females that could replace them. Okay, so why not use it? Like we're, we're girls. Um, so if we have role models, use them and we definitely do. Like you talked about Messi and Ronaldo there, Bruno. I mean, I'm talking about the little clip. I'm thinking about the little clip that Jerome put together of, of um, Ashling Doonan, who retired from, from Cavan. Dummy off her left, dummy off her right side, kicking points left and right. Amy Mackin's point in the championship outside of the boot. You know, we have phenomenally gifted players. Um, bro, I just want to bring in uh, Ashling Nigrourke uh, for a sec, who's nodding her head. And I'm sure a lot of what Brona is talking about here, Ashling, is resonating with you. What was your experience? And when, when Brona was talking there, what were the key messages and experiences? Because she's talking about your specific age group to a large degree. What were you picking up on there, Ashling? No, definitely. Um, with my project as well, we definitely want coaches to focus focus more on the retention of players and and sort of not to overvalue winning at that age because obviously at that age you know you're going into go games and grading games at that time and maybe coaches feel a bit more pressure to um put more emphasis on winning games but instead we think it it will be better to definitely just see the person behind the player rather than seeing um, results maybe at the end of the day, it's better to look long-term than the short-term goals. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and William, it's it's that long term pathway that we hear we hear so much about as well. When you, and and I think Ashling has just nailed it there that the emphasis on winning when you're at at a developmental age, it can't all be about that. It's about cultivating the player. It's the holistic approach to becoming not just a player but but an overall rounded adult as well. Yeah, and it's adopting that long term development, uh, I suppose, vision. And I suppose our clubs, everybody has a role, don't we, to, to, to probably look at that long-term vision. How do we keep girls in the game longer? It's, it's our vision that we want them to play. This It's a, life, a lifelong participation in our sport. And I suppose if you're coaching girls, and I, I'm sure Brona and Ashley will be kind of, you know, probably reinforce this even more, your job as a coach at 13, 14, 15 is to guide them, is to develop them so that, you know what, is to, that when they do get to the older age groups, they're able to, I suppose, meet the challenges that come with it. So you're you're kind of a, a coach along their journey. It's like this, they they say this kind of self gratification, Jackie, in that you know, you know it's not about what you win in that age group, and it's about really developing for later on. And and then when the players get to add a level, then how do we achieve, get them to achieve their goals uh, and what they're trying to achieve at, at older level? And and the research actually backs it up as well, Jackie, that. Early high intensity training, uh, early, uh, I suppose, specialization in a sport, uh, too much uh, focus on the competitiveness actually does not have a direct cor- correlation to actually senior success. So, I suppose, coaches, I suppose, just need to adopt that long term development uh, approach. And I like I like this idea and, and things like you know I brought you don't mind me saying you know the chit chat and and, <laughs> and talking and a lot of coaches struggle with that because I suppose you know they feel that if a girl is chatting and talking you know they probably think oh they're not concentrating or they're not listening to me when in actual fact that's probably the opposite and and probably the good opportunity for coaches to listen to what's going on in girls' lives as well I, I don't know Brona I just think that's one area that probably a lot of coaches would struggle on would you agree with me on that one. Yeah, I think even like scheduling time for that into your session that like I know the days of running a lap for the warm up, like those days are gone. But that's when I used to chat the most, like within that like a lap warm up. And then you can do your warm up after that. That's fine. Or the water break that you do allow them time to chat because you do leave training. Like I've been going to train and I'd be like, God, I meant to ask. Like you knew there was things maybe in other people's lives, like they're leaving their or exams or um, maybe someone passed away and you need to talk to the person. Yeah. But you actually don't even, you could go the whole training session and not get to actually talk to someone. Yeah. Um, because all you're doing is, girls, are you listening? If you're not listening, so actually factoring in that time, I think for chat, I know with like our dressing room can be very loud if we're allowed to chat. Um, but I do think that's important. And even yeah. what you said, Will, on like the success and being competitive, like at those ages, like 14, 15, and coaches wanting to be successful, I think at those ages, like for me, a coach's success, if they're coaching at that age, is, is are they still playing when they're 21? Yeah. Um, and that should be their measure of success. Yeah. Um, not if they won the under 14. Yeah, whereas some coaches will obviously have that mindset though, won't they, Brona, that, you know, I need to win things to have this on my CV and they don't consider themselves successful unless they have trophies or they've reached finals. Whereas, as as you nailed it, you know, it's all about that development of the player that they will continue to play and enjoy the sport and, and move up the ranks and become successful adult players. And Even on, on that one, Jackie, do you know, on that one, I suppose also on that one is that they probably feel that if they don't achieve something that they're being judged. Yes. You know, so if we don't, if I don't win with the, with the under 14 girls this year, geez, I'm going to be judged by the club and therefore they're going to think I'm no good and I won't be back next year. But so it's, 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 there's that element too. And I, and I think, Ashing, you, you looked as well. Another thing in terms of, I suppose, I suppose guiding players and working around player schedules. And you mentioned there about, you know, there's, Brona mentioned there's other things going on in their lives. In your study, you, you looked at the whole area of the timing of sessions and, and the understanding that, you know what, there's school, there's discourse, that possibly, you know, to understand that bigger picture too, Ashling. I, I think you, that was another area that kind of came across as well, Ashling. Would I be right in saying that in your one, in your study? Yeah, definitely. Um, we, we definitely agree with Brown as well with um, factoring in the chat so important because even for girls at that age, maybe some of the reasons the girls go to training is a lot of that time to because they're moving from primary school. So they might not be seeing their friends every day, but they're moving to secondary school now. So they want to be able to chat with their old friends and even chat with new girls and make new friends as well. So I think that's so important. 
and the time, the time it's, that, it's that social that social element of it um Ashley, which is very important for you yeah definitely definitely um i just think that's one of the most important things i mean obviously we want to as well um not be telling coaches to let the girls chat for the entire session or anything not to take away from that either but just give them a little bit of time to even you know ask about the leaving cert as Brona said or you know just make sure they're all and I think that as well will build team chemistry which it, in long term as well will only help the team. Ashley I hope you don't mind me asking you, how are you coping with everything and, and this world that we're living in because I, I think maybe we're not asking each other enough how are you but, but how are you Ashley how are you doing how is everything in your life <laughs> well I haven't been a loving school at home I must say and um, definitely find it finding it trickier um and I also like genuinely I will go out for say even a 10k run just to get away from school I'm not the best <laughs> student all the time so I find it's I just love going out for the exercise so I'm definitely missing um training now but yeah it, it'll be nice to go back hopefully sooner rather than later. And Ashley, you mentioned there about team chemistry that Jackie mentioned do you feel now is an ideal time for coaches because sometimes I suppose coaches and probably feel that you're okay there's no games on you know there's no point really doing much with the team or but is this actually an ideal time I, I, I was reading your 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 research and you're saying about your know, team chemistry and even the things like team bingo and stuff like that like there are things we could do online are there things you promote that probably coaches feel that oh if there's nothing happening on the field okay we'll leave them off till we're closer but is this a good time for coaches to start developing that team chemistry do you think Definitely, because I think even if your parents maybe aren't as involved in the GA, it's easier to push it to the side. And I just think it would be a great time for coaches even to just check back in with the girls. It doesn't have to be every day, but it can be, say, once a week. And just to make sure the girls are still kind of getting that social aspect with their team. So when we go back, it's as normal as possible. And just to even keep up that fitness and the, you know, improving the mental health as well as the physical health as well. So, yeah, I definitely think team bingo or even as um, Brona said, with the role models and everything is definitely just even to like watch some documentaries or whatever would be a great way to kind of stay motivated and everything and keep improving. Brilliant, Asha. Well, you'd have a, a, a guest bingo caller there. He's well set up for it anyway with, with, with the gear whenever you want to call upon him. Uh, <laughs> Ashley, can I just ask... Uh, looking at your experience you you, you say you've had a, a hugely positive sporting journey all right uh you play football and camogie with kula and you're very passionate about the benefits of team sport for, for teenage girls but you're in that cohort of players where it's in, in, you know some drop out unfortunately when, when you think about the group that maybe you first started out with can you quantify how many are still on that journey with you um and is it a case that they have to find their own path or is there a case that maybe you or the, or, or the people that are still playing can give them a gentle nudge from time to time or maybe a message to say, would you like to come back sometime? Or, or again, ask the question, how are things in your life? What, what, what are your own, your own feelings and all of that? And definitely when we, my group, we had two teams by the age of 12 and 13, but by the age of under 16s, we have, we had 12 Kamogi players and 15 football players. So we were struggling to even to barely field one team at that time. So we would go to matches and we'd have to play 13 aside. So it wouldn't even be almost, it wasn't fair a lot of the time, but because we had that smaller number, we became a lot closer as a group of girls we could, and we all became to rely on each other. So we, you know, it was really good. You were able to push one another to come to training because there was that, little amount and obviously it would have been much better if there were more girls and we were able to you know ex expand that but um now I am playing senior camogie so it's amazing as well because get all the older girls and I'm also doing minor football so we have um I'm an 2003 so we also have the 2004 girls who have a ginormous group and um, they've loads of players so it's really nice to just get to know everyone and definitely there's great team chemistry there but um just it would have been nice if we had that bigger team at that time we definitely struggled um 
do you feel and do you feel lashing do you find that you know your your i suppose that body system or that support because i know you looked at the whole area of the peer support and your teammate and the importance that jackie outlined of that support like that body system and stuff that you probably have now even with the older group is that something you would advocate in in your in your from your research is that something that you saw true from your own experience as well most definitely um i find it's it's amazing doing it with the um older girls as well because they can you know tell you what to do for the leaving so oh, sorry i'm not telling you what to do but you know give you some tips and like tricks and even just they're just there to support you to let you know like you can keep playing when you are older and i think for my project it was important we got the ty girls to show the girls there is a future in sport and you can continue to play throughout secondary school as well yeah, Ashley, tell me a little bit more, um, and I'd love Brona's thoughts on this as well, the Keeping Girls Playing project. W- what was the genesis of it? Uh, how did it come about and how did you how did you then manage to, to, to implement it and then get the obviously the key findings from it? Um, well, I, so I, I partook in the Durham Early Youth Leadership Initiative and in the third module we had to complete a community project, 20-hour community project, and um, when I was doing my second module and um, I was doing a presentation on what the GA meant to me. My, that was my group kind of, that was the, you know, that was basically the average kind of the thing. So but I was doing it from the perspective of a female. So when I was doing kind of research on that presentation came across the little survey, which said, you know, one in two girls drop out by the age of 13. And even, you know, Brona's project says it all as well with them but even girls are three times more likely to drop out of sport than boys and I just thought that was you know ridiculous like even hearing this you're like that couldn't be true but then upon my reflection on my own journey it did make sense so I decided for the third module we'd do a little kind of event for the girls the 12 to 13 year old girls in my club but then obviously with COVID, we had to rethink that and rejig it a little bit. So um decided to kind of take the three main strands um, that influence the girls. So their parents, their coaches and their peers and kind of to work together to help the girls and just, you know, just try to help them in any way possible to retain them as well um, and just keep them playing sport. Yeah. Very impressive young lady, uh, Dr. Brona. Yeah, I know she can put me out of a job, I think. Um, <laughs> no, I think what Ashley, even something that we haven't mentioned is like she's focused on parents as well, which like is so important because that's who's going to bring you training, you know, and there, if you don't have that parental support, um, you're probably relying on your friends, parents for lifts or that type of thing. Um, so I know like after reading Ashley's research like she came up with some really useful like tips like basic ones that I wouldn't have thought of things like like the importance of learning your child's teammates names so you could actually have a conversation about them or if she's talking about them you know who she's talking about so things like that that we may like they're obvious but you mightn't think of them um but I think yeah along with coaches the parental support well done Ashley because I forgot about and on that one, Brona, and I, and I loved actually, Ashling, the way you used you know, the role models. And, and, and you, know, you highlighted that a lot of parents might know much about ladies football and, or even the GA in general. And we have this kind of perception that everybody knows what happens down the field. You know, everybody knows what goes on. And the reality of the situation is, is that's not true. You know, not everybody knows. So I love the way you brought it. And George, Jackie, Ash, you can probably give us a bit of the, the, the presentation you did with parents. I thought that was a really exceptional idea. Uh, uh, presentation sway, am I right in saying that? Could you give us a bit more information on that? Because I thought that was a great idea. Yeah, so um, we decided that maybe a visual presentation could be a bit easier and it would just go into topics like how to support your daughter at matches, like the easy ones, as Brenda said, but they can sometimes be overlooked. Even the um, this month's one is role models. So we've gotten, we've written out a list of 60 documentaries for the parents to watch because even like you may not be the biggest avid, your mom may not may or may not be the biggest avid GAA fan or your dad. So they may actually, you know, not fully understand what's going on. But if you can just even even show the different sports like we have swimmers runners all these amazing girls and I feel like a lot of the time we say oh maybe there aren't enough 
female role models, but you just have to look a bit harder. And there are so many amazing girls and I watch all 60 of the documentaries and and just love them all. So yeah, I definitely think it's um, just a good one to do and just even to keep yourself inspired and listen to all their stories is really inspiring. I think, well. I think, I think Jack, you should do a quick fire round to see how well she got to know all the players. What do you think? <laughs> 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 it, it's just, you know, the, the, the way you go about things is, is absolutely remarkable. Your maturity for such a young girl, Ashing, is, is, is incredible. And, and I wish you, you know, you talk about your journey and you have such a, a road to travel still. And I wish you so, so well. Um, Dr. Brona, where are we at, at this point in time with... Um, the dropout uh, situation and how has COVID impacted? Can we probably can't evaluate that just yet, can we? And you know, because look, on a very basic human level, I just think we all love getting out and about and doing some exercises. Ashing has alluded to herself, but the fact that we can, you know, that that teams and clubs are, are are restricted in terms of getting together, how has that impacted? Do you think on, or how will it impact? I think is probably a more relevant question, Brona. Um, I think even, yeah, like it's hard to tell, like we obviously didn't think we'd still be in this position almost a year later. Um, and like I know for us, like my team, Savannah, and we started off going home with Zoom quizzes every week. Oh, we were like <laughs> loving life last It was back. a novelty, wasn't it? And, and it all wore off very quick. And you can tell, you can tell even in team WhatsApps and I'm the same, like your motivation fluctuates you're going home one week, like you're going to break 10K records and the following week you, you might not even go out for a run. Um, like everyone I think is fluctuating, but for me, the thing that I think is striking people actually is, right, we all played football or play football, but it, you realize how much that social interaction was important to you now. Like I can do all the rest. I can go outside with my football. I can go for a run. I can do gym work all of that but it's just not the same because you don't have your teammates around you um oh so- in that sense Brona, can it actually i i hate to, to 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 mention the word positive when it comes to the COVID experience because it's been such a, a a grim situation in many ways but the fact that people have missed football so much when eventually we do get back to that semblance of normality and we can all get together and mingle and and have contact training and contact sessions and and full-scale matches Will, will will the lure of sport be amplified even more than given what we've gone through previously? I think so. Like I, well, maybe I'm looking at it with rose tinted glasses because I would think so because people are missing it. Like on our WhatsApp group, it's probably more active than ever. Everyone's chatting because we do miss sport. Um, you miss watching it. Like there in the lead up to the women's all irons it was brilliant like I never watched this much sport in my life because you would access to all the ladies games it was brilliant um but you really felt actually without this I'd have nothing like these weekends are dead <laughs> um because I've no sport to watch um so I do think hopefully it will bring girls back and even it's allowing girls time to actually reflect on their lives and it's not a case of like for us there have been girls maybe that stepped away because they went maybe to Galway or England for college or for a job and they're back and maybe going from one season straight into the next it's difficult to walk into a dressing room when there's only been like a two-month gap but at this point we haven't been in a dressing room together there's no you know everyone's coming from a break so I think having the door open to girls that may have stepped away actually is really important now because in a way everyone's going to be starting from square one again after all your 5k runs or whatever you're keeping yourself sane with but like I think like for us for my team we've welcomed anyone back in and we have had girls come back now um since Christmas that we might not have seen in the last year or two, which is brilliant. Um, they might be put off by the running and stuff, but they're there, like, and they're back in the WhatsApp group, and it's brilliant, like, so hopefully, I'm hoping, but I could be saying this, and then the lure of the novelty of holidays might take over um, for some people, but I'm hoping it's football. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Uh, um... And actually, what you're in in your own peer group? What is the what is the general feeling around these times? And your teammates, how much are they missing 
missing sport? I mean, you're playing, obviously, you say Camogie and Ladies Football. How much are you missing at all? Oh, I'm missing it loads. Um, just, yeah, just, it's really good with the WhatsApp groups are actually very helpful. And um, we've got, you know, some gym sessions with the club and, you know, in both Camogie and the football. So it's really good just to even have some goals to do during the week. So whether that is you do, you know, one hit session and one run or just work on skills and camogie or football, it's actually really helpful to have, you know, that support from the club, I think is so important as well, because you actually do feel supported and, you know, there is hope that we will be getting back to the pitch soon, <laughs> hopefully anyway. I, I'm 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 reading a little bit about a particular your experience with the Dermot Early uh, Youth Leadership Initiative. Mm-hmm. Ashing, uh, in terms of your own personal development, you you write here when I first or you spoke to John Harrington from the GA for the piece. When I was first joined, I was definitely a quiet enough person. You said, I mean, you're, I can feel that you you exude confidence now, Ashing. So in terms of what you've done with. <laughs> With the Keeping Girls Playing project and and the the Dermot Early Youth Leadership Initiative piece, it, it it's obviously had a huge benefit on you. Definitely, I am. Um, when even when I started the project, I wasn't. I'd sit in the little conversation rooms and I wouldn't be sure if my opinion was needed. You know, I'd kind of sit there quietly and more observe and listen. But I think it's just you learn so much during that course, like in terms of the different styles of leadership, the different styles of communication and almost which one sort of suits your character best and how you can improve that. Like we have little, we had little workbooks to fill in and that, that was, those were really helpful. And I think even um, I feel like because I'm so kind of passionate about the sport and everything, this isn't a difficult subject for me to talk about because I actually just enjoy talking about it. It's not, you know, a chore or anything. So I actually just really enjoy and discussing it, but yeah. So actually, all all I can say from my from my point of view, and you know, it's the first time I've ever chatted to you, is keep doing what you're doing because you're an absolute inspiration to anybody that's going to be watching in and and looking on. And I wish you so so well, um, on your journey long into the future, and perhaps someday we'll be talking to Doctor Ashing as well, which would be, <laughs> which would be really, really. We wish you so well. <laughs> Uh, Brona, what's next for you or what's what's happening in your world? Uh, any new studies in, in the pipeline or where are you at? Um, we actually redid this survey um, because of COVID and um, to yeah. see the effects COVID are having on adolescents' physical activity and their well-being as well because this was all done literally just pre-COVID. Um, so we have to analyse that. So <laughs> yeah. That's loads of fun. Um, other well, than that, can we expect provisionally to see the results, Brona. What's your timelines? Jeez, uh, you look pressure, Jackie. <laughs> um, I work dead, uh, Brona, as you as you do, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, in the next month or so, we'd have results out. Um, because I feel I'm hoping that after that, COVID will be irrelevant to us all. Um, I'm I'm being positive. Um, so yeah, that's currently what we're looking at um in terms of my work and i'm just lecturing pe online which has its own um, trials as well but yeah and trying to keep sane um, yeah i mean i asked asking i asked asking this question how are you doing generally Bron? i i think look from my own point of view i find i find this particular lockdown a real challenge i have to say and it's it's you know get out do a couple of 5k's go walk with the kids get a bit of fresh air anything to stay as you mentioned saying it's 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 really about just gritting your teeth and getting through this one i think yeah i think with the other lockdowns i kind of felt like oh this is the last one and this is the last one there's something different about a lockdown in january I think. yeah it's a little bit like, darker yeah yeah and you don't have like the sport on the tv like that type of thing or you know we summer at the end of the first one to look forward to it. then we kind of thought oh well, we might have christmas Whereas with this one, it's just like, right, let's just knuckle down here and let's get fit. Let's do whatever we have to do to just hopefully wish January away. Like, that's what I feel like I'm doing like every yeah, day. And, 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 I, I, and I suppose with that, I suppose what I learned, you know, is that I suppose look all you can do just focus on today and tomorrow and, and do the yeah. best you can every day. Isn't that right? You know, and just get you know what tomorrow's gonna be a good day again and just go again and 
Um, and, and that's that's our But going back to support, and I know Jackie, but I think Ashing has a has a good support person in, in the background there as well. And I know does Joyce want to say hello, but Joyce you know, to say hello. Come on, Joyce. I, I, I think I think Jackie, uh, you know, Ashing said there in terms, <laughs> in terms <laughs> no problem. In terms of uh, I suppose Ashley, in terms of your study, you, you highlighted about the parents and the importance of the parents. And Joyce, we, I suppose we just want to acknowledge you know the support you've given Ashley and also ourselves over the last number of weeks today as well. But if you don't mind, just maybe just give us your thoughts on 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 what's what you've been listening to, and then also to say thank you very much for everything as well. Absolutely, Joyce, and you should be incredibly incredibly proud of of Ashing and what she's done. Thank so, you. Welcome, welcome to the show. Yeah, she's yeah, she's done a done a great job here, and I, I just think it's it's um uh, just such an important um such an important topic. Such a, you know, I, I just think keeping young girls involved. In sport, kind of a just a massive impact on as Rona says on their mental health, on their physical health, on how they feel. I think about themselves and you know the lifelong skills that they can can gain. And you know, mo- let's face it, mo- most young girls probably aren't going to go on and be Olympic athletes or anything, but they can learn how to uh, you know about self discipline resilience how to pick yourself up after a you know a bit of a disaster things that help in the workplace they just help in life so I think um I I just I I have to say I love 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 watching the girls play I I just think they're brilliant (laughs) to it doesn't matter what division they're just great to be out there playing and I think if we as parents as well can you know do anything just to show them we, we value their sport. We think they're great to be out there. You know, it's so important. There are so many, you know, fantastic female role models, but just even that the girls are brave enough to go out on the pitch in front of, you know, their parents and their friends and do their best. I I think that's worth fighting for anyway. I, I think, think that, Joe, I was just thinking there, Jackie, if we're ever looking for a mentor, I'll be on to you, Joyce, because I'm telling you, <laughs> if you, if you spoke to us before a, a final, I would go through the wall for you because <laughs> your enthusiasm is infectious, but it's just good to see that parent and the value, obviously, mm-hmm. your, your daughter and so proud of what Ashton's done, but also the value of the, that support of the parents is, is huge and important. And just having those conversations, just having those conversations about how the training goes, you know, for you, you know, how you're improving, you know, you can't mm-hmm. underestimate it, can you, Joyce, I suppose, really? So I just want to say thank you very much for, for all your support over the last number of weeks as well um, in relation to that. So I knew you were in the background there, so I hope you don't mind me. Uh, just, <laughs> Joyce, you know, as, as, a, as a parent, Joyce, and I'm speaking from my own experience, you worry about your kids and you, you, you fear for them and, and you obviously wonder how they're going to evolve and, and progress through their life. And, and to, to hear Ashley talking about how her recent experiences have helped to, to bring her out of herself. I mean, you must feel, you know, so happy and proud of her and, and what she's achieved. Yeah, ab- absolutely. I, I think it's, it's, um, it's great. And, uh, you know, I think as she said, the Dermot Early Youth Leadership Initiative was a brilliant thing to do. She was lucky to have a fantastic mentor, um, Kevin Spain, who I think gives young people huge belief in themselves yeah. that yeah. they can do things and and you know he'd be very interested in following up and kind of having transition year girls get involved in mentoring the younger girls and just you know because i think we can have lots of different kinds of role models we can have the amazing athletes but we can also have the girls who are just a few years older but who are still there and you know, they can say, oh, gosh, OK, well, she managed to get her homework done and, and did her junior cert and didn't have to give up because she was doing her junior cert. And, you know, uh, and Ashling, as she said, she can look at girls who are now in college or there's one girl on her camogie team who's who's 30 and is a full time medic yeah. and she's still out there, you know, and yeah. these are the kind of role models that are are great. And, I, you know, for um for your mental health and you you love going out don't you even if you've had a yeah. bad day at school yeah. and you just go out and have a laugh with your friends and a blast of exercise and you come back and 
great fun. Right. And a huge, a hugely progressive club as well, yeah. rejoicing in, in Kula as well, and, and cater exceptionally well for females as well, so it's fantastic. Mm. Ashing, wishing you well. Uh, Brona and Wills, before we finish up, I'm just kind of curious about things. I know I kind of look around. Uh, Brona, what's the carcass on um, reference in the background there uh, over your oh, over your right shoulder as you're sitting? It's just there to annoy me with a holiday I've gone. <laughs> um, we were in Carcassonne, I think it's probably two years now. <laughs> squeeze it in <laughs> hopefully we'll get back to those great times um wills do you want to wrap things up with you with your, with your own couple of final thoughts before we yeah. before we, we wrap up i must say jackie i, I really enjoy the show yeah, really brilliant. enjoy the show. i can't believe you know, i don't know how long we're on but it, it's it was just a really insightful uh looking at things from a different perspective uh in terms of you know how we go about our business and i suppose jackie this is an ideal opportunity for coaches just to reflect on their own coaching uh to upskill and i think anybody listening here tonight they're a coach of any teenage girls there's some great nuggets of information for themselves to take away and we would i suppose ask coaches just to reflect on everything that's been said here tonight you know and i suppose the biggest one for me was there's more more to the player than the player there's the person there's the person and understanding the person and engaging the person and talking to the person and the value of that because even now in the COVID we understand the importance of connection and interaction with people so I think that was a big one so I would say definitely use these opportunities and we're going to have more uh, the shows coming up the next one will be probably focus on the other demands of the game but this is such a great topic at the moment it's uh, just to kind of reflect and I just say thanks to Brona for sharing her um, her research uh, Brona is a coach developer she's also a Gale for Teens ambassador with us and is also helping out with our Gale for Teens program so Brona's doing an awful good work Brilliant. and uh, Ashley an inspiration uh, I must say you know I know we, we met each other earlier uh, last year when you're putting all, all, all this stuff together you know and I was just you were just so enthusiastic but the key points you came across tonight geez, yeah, if any coach you've seen tonight is listening to what, what you were saying um, I think they'll be way better for it and then obviously Mom Joyce thank you very much uh, for your support as well. But Jackie, I, I think that was great learning. So we're looking forward to the next uh, show coming up as well uh, next month. But I think, um, thank you very much, everyone. I think it was really yeah, great, way to, great way to kick off this mini series, William, I have yeah. to say. Uh, Dr. Brona McGrain, we're going to share uh, the link to uh, your findings from the physical activity and well being study and also the follow-up video that you did on the lgfa research pod so um if, particularly if you're watching this on facebook you can look under the link and also on the youtube link as well you'll be able to access the link and we'll also share um ashley the link to your piece with the with ga.ie with john harrington um john a good friend of mine from tipperary uh just as an aside uh, so you were in good company there. He did you certainly did you justice. Super writer as well. Um, and William will be in touch, obviously, uh, as colleagues in the LGFA. We'll we'll, we'll stay uh, tight and close to each other over the next little while. Um, so that's been uh, the first part of it, William. So William Harriman, uh, National Development Officer with Remit for Coach Education, Dr. Brona McGrain and Ashling Nig Rourke and Mum Joyce. Thanks for coming on today, folks. Really enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much, Jackie.